So, as I typically do with, like, gaming subjects, um, I want to have it, like, more of an open-end discussion that's not necessarily, like, focus on the games. But, you know, like, I'll give context where it's due. So, just reading off the title, the Final Fantasy director, Naoki Yoshida, sorry if I destroy that name, admits the famous RPG series, role-playing game, series is currently struggling. The solution, Yoshida says, may be to continue developing all sorts of different Final Fantasy titles. So, I am, as you guys know by now, a huge fan of Final Fantasy. It is my favorite series, my favorite piece of media of all time, maybe barring the movie Memento, which I think is the greatest yeah, movie of all time. Good call. Favorite movie. Okay. This statement feel fills me up with fear. And originally I was like, it's a bummer that Mary isn't here because I want to talk to her. But now, given our previous discussion, I think it's perfect that you're here. Because I think <laughs> Thanks, that we No, for real. Because I think I really want your opinion on something. So essentially the, the the director is saying that he's getting a bunch of feedback of like what the series needs. Okay. And as you would imagine, it's very conflicting. And some of the people say, you know, the action is not up to par with the current types of video games. And it needs to be more fast paced, like the dialogue, like the voice acting needs to be better. It needs more graphics. It needs less graphics. It needs Thank like you. less. So it's like it's completely like Maniac Schizo like points of view. So originally these games were text on screen where you would read and it's completely analogous, honestly, to like fiction books. Mm hmm. To where, like, you played the drama, but, like, there will be points in time where you would get, like, a lot of the, the narrative, right? And you would do, like, a huge narrative and plot download, and then you move through the story. And the way that, like, combat and action would entail is that you have a menu with different options for different characters, and you select different actions, and you could pretty much like take your time and think of strategies and whatever. And honestly, it's not the hardest thing in the world. Like some like enemies were designed to be very difficult, but like you could get past the game with like some like honestly like rudimentary knowledge. And <laughs> the good thing about this is that it was like story first. Whereas now they they keep focusing on a remakes, mm -hmm. which you know. Okay, you, Claire loves that. I'm opposed to them. By the way, like it's hard. I mean, I I try not to be too judgmental, especially because I'm not like a video games expert by any means. But like remakes just seems boring. Like so there's what so think with video games I could understand being like it's there's new graphics and new technology, so maybe you do want to see it again. I'm old and sentimental, so I like things exactly as they were the first time I played them. But so they. The argument for some fans is that it's it, like the graphics just don't hold up because it's like old and blocky and whatever. Mm -hmm. However, the issue is there were some like great like dialogues and narratives and plots that you would read and you were interpret in your mind like how the characters would have like the dy dynamics. And it used to be like this whole discussion is like, oh, I thought he, they said that sarcastically. Oh, no. Like, I thought they meant it quite literally. And oh, like, I, hate, I love that. I, I mm -hmm. love going back and rewatching movies, even where like I interpreted things wrong just because I was young and dumb and, and didn't understand the context of what I was watching. And now that's gone. Yeah. I used to feel that way about like listening to music. Like if I really loved the lyrics in a song and like whatever, I would never watch the music video because how mm. I was imagining yeah. it was like ha what felt real to me and I didn't want another interpretation. You know what I mean? Even if it was from the artists themselves, like I was happy being able to like experience it on my own. Yep. Right. And that makes a lot of sense. And like, I don't know. So I guess like the, the equivalent of that would be to not play the remake and only play the original. And so when when... So there, there's one of the most famous games of all time that's called Final Fantasy VII. It's gotten remade. And the thing is, well, I mean, it's it's gotten like a third of the story remade and they're gonna release the last two thirds in two mm -hmm. different games. And the thing is like, they are changing the plot and, and they keep saying that they're adding to it, but like, they're like recontextualizing things. And so- Things that are different now from the original. 
completely. Okay, that's like some characters that died are alive. Yeah. Um, some characters like got injured at a point where they they didn't get injured in the story, and they have this thing in in the game where there's like some ghosts, literally like ghosts, mm -hmm. that come in in the moments where the plot changes, and it's like. The plot's changing, and they kind of remove the characters from the... Like, literally, like, whoosh, like whoosh them away hmm. from the physical space in order for, like, the plot not to change too much. Hmm. Which so is, is, one the, is one of the problems here that they're just trying to accommodate too many voices and you just can't make everyone happy? That's an issue. Yeah. But, like, as general media consumers and not video game players, what should take precedent? A, adapting things to modern times. Okay. And, like, giving, let's say, like, an old classic, like, a new, like, breath of air. Like, with, like, the new technology and, like, perhaps the new con preconceptions of society as it is today. Mm -hmm. Or B, playing homage to an old classic, but perhaps, you know, alienating, like, a new crowd that won't be interested because it doesn't have the modern bells and whistles. I don't know. What's your preference? That's so, a very hard question to answer. So I'm a boomer, right? Yeah. So alienate the new people. And no, but so originally I liked that they added things. Okay. I like, I like that they add. I don't like that they change. Hmm. That's my issue. Well, that's very hard to do then, right? It is very hard yeah. to do. And the thing is like, as we previously discussed, like, I think with, with, with you, yeah, you, you yeah. were there. Sorry. I don't know if the character, the mic got that, my bad. Um, so there's a character in this game that famously dies. Oh, we talked about this. And then yeah. they were, like, alluding to the fact that she would, like, maybe actually she's not dead or, like, she doesn't die in the remake of it. But is her, it is? her death is like a huge plot point. People remember it. And it's essential for the ending of it. Mm. Because the thing is, like, she leaves, let's say, like, a legacy and trusted on the protagonist, which, like, again, brings up the, the point that the journey is the protagonist, not the people. And the theme of the game is that you are going to lose things. And yeah. you have to keep going. Yeah. Because, like, you know, the but if world we don't have this death, then we never get that like thematic moral literally the end can't happen if she's not dead hmm. it would have to be a completely different end and do you like the ending right it's it's important i mean it's well done because i could understand being like ah oh, just kidding she didn't die if everyone was like that ending was not worth it it's not justified it's not good of all the endings of of this series of games i don't know if this is the best one it's serviceable it, but it's like a trip because it's like too phil it's like too philosophical at one point and like you don't you don't actually know what's happening. Has the series just gotten too big that, that it's too big to accommodate the story? Perhaps because I don't know if you guys know this, but the the series is called Final Fantasy mm -hmm. because the original director, like he thought that this was gonna be his last yeah. game. Because, like, essentially all his games were tanking. And this one succeeded, ironically. And now we're at, like, sixteen. Final Fantasy sixteen is going to come. Yeah. But they're not sequels. They're all, like, inter, like independent worlds with some, like, thematic... Connections, co yeah. I'd say more coincidences than connections. But they, they base themselves of, like, real world, like, North... And like Indian and like all, all sorts of mythologies, mm. right? And so that's the cool part. And they have some, let's say, like recurring characters, but they're more in spirit than the actual. It's like the name comes back. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And so the thing is so here's another example. So in the industry, there's like this habit that's being formed of like, old school types of games with the uh, old graphics and where you have to like read and everything but with like modernized sprites and that's doing like pretty well yeah. versus this it's like voice acting like top budget yeah. like 
uh, like visual effects, yada yada, and it's like gold, like gangbusters in sales, but it's so divisive. And the thing is, the thing about like bad, as as I say, like no marketing is bad marketing. I, although I would disagree with that. Yeah. And the, the example that I want to give, I don't think I could give it on air, but it's like philosophically like I, i'm really interested in like hearing from your guys perspective like that you don't play these games is like if video games which is like one of the last bastions of like actual creativity now it's sinking to remakes again yep it's like god if like if video games like gets into remakes too well, it's already there it's already there. So, like, where do we go? I mean, Resident Evil is already doing a bunch of. Re- has already done a bunch, right? Like, that's that's a that's a big part of it already. My theory about video games is that they are starting to not understand who their audience is, uh, in part because the, uh, like, what was like the first big video game? Like, wait, like the Atari or Atari? What? I say a Pong. Yeah. So, like, when did that come out? The eighties, eighties, seventies, or eighties. Yeah. Know. Right. So like this is actually compared to a lot of industries relatively new. It's newer than film or TV in a lot of ways. So I think we had an idea of who was getting interested in them, in, interested in video games, who was buying video games through the 80s and 90s and the 2000s. Like I feel and I, I'm not an expert. You know, I could be totally wrong on this. Uh, there was the rise of like more family friendly video games maybe or like like a different animation style. I'm thinking like Mario Kart and stuff like that. Mm. And now there is so much technology that's changing the way people play video games and there's a broader audience. Like you can create video games for small children. There's like homeschooling themed video games. And then there are like hardcore video games that are like very combat oriented or like legend oriented for War people games. who have to have a long attention span. So whether that's adults or teenagers or whatever else, I think in some ways they are sticking with remakes because they were successful before and that's what they know. And in some ways I think it might be because there is a confusion over who they are trying to target. Like when the guy, people who made Halo, right? I think of Halo as like a big deal video game. I it is it super big deal. Super big deal. Okay, cool. Because I have an older brother who played it and we had cousins who also played it and they were really excited about it. I think of it as very much connected to the Xbox because that was when I remember him yeah. being like, yeah. I need to get an Xbox. Like it's it's on, ha- like I don't even know if it was exclusive to Halo. It was like, it was like a flagship IP. Right. And this was very much the equivalent for that for PlayStation. Okay, so in that sense, this Final Fantasy is fantasy. It's uh, quest-driven. There's narrative structure. Halo, I think there technically is a storyline. There is. I'm not quite aware of it because it seems much more about the combat, about the military aspect of it. Like, people who are interested in uh, shooting will play it. Also, um, what I remember really intensely about Halo, maybe Final Fantasy has this, but like you could play like Capture the Flag on it or yeah. like... Um, Final Fantasy is like exclusive one player. Exactly. Like so they there's like a market. People don't know who they're selling. Do, do they want more one player story driven quest like mission oriented games? Or is it more about these versatile games that maybe have a plot, but also when you buy the game, you have the option to be on in a multiplayer mode. You can do sort of, sort of a lot with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't speak specifically to Final Fantasy because, I again, I'm not really familiar with it. I think this is just proves um, the power of nostalgia and that that in the ease of marketing nostalgic products, and that's a problem. That interesting. So see, I think it's beyond nostalgia. Like, I think they're sticking to nostalgia because that's what the creators nostalgia know. Nostalgia and IP. That's what they grew up with, and that's yeah. what they made. But also, they don't know what their audience wants because the audience the 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 market for video games is expanded so rapidly since yeah. this came out and also video games has an inter- interesting nuance that other entertainment industries don't have as much like the united states market has some foreign films but in, when it comes to video games you have legitimately a massive exposure of gaming developed from other nations like i've played a bunch of japanese games mm-hmm that naturally get like regionalized for the United States. And as well as like the Japanese that play like American games. And so as you would imagine, like American games are getting like the token, like she, she boss, like whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Although it's not as prevalent as it is in movies, like at all. Yeah. Like there's still some of it, but it's nowhere near as prevalent versus like the Japanese games. They don't, 
pander to wokeism at all because like it's a mental illness as they as people know but um they kind of had like their annoying tropes as well of like the insanely submissive like yeah yep. woman that's like manic pixie like i think <laughs> is like the term and so it's like Manic Pixie Dream Girl is a uniquely American, American thing. I mean, we were talking about Garden State earlier, and uh, I don't know what that is. Yeah. What the movie Garden State? Look at that oh head whip. No. Um, uh, but I, I told you you should start having Cast Castle movie nights, and I will catch up. The, uh, did you, I was talking to? I was reading a thing the other day. Remember you were here when we covered like Spider Man in the modding of the of the game to put oh the, to take the, the, the like the flag, pride flag out. And you sent me an article about the, that last night. Did you know how that got done so fast? That that was just the they just modded that from the textures from like the Chinese version of the game. Oh my god, base! <laughs> <laughs> like the guy didn't have to create the flags himself. He just took it from a, a version of it that that like the uh, the um. Which the, means it was intentionally marketed only to Americans. Yes, though. obviously, uh, that yeah. Way, yeah. So that was just, I just thought that was really funny that that he didn't even have to he didn't have to create it himself. He just it took it there. from the from the thus proving that the marketing is always pandering. Over the weekend, I was watching like a European uh, like gaming event that they were having, mm -hmm. and no one was wearing a mask. There was like no like pr pronouns in, in mm. like the so like it was it's it's something called speedruns which is like the ultimate level of dorkdom where like essentially they, they I watch Goldeneye speedruns all the time they break the game no right and they speed beat runs. it essentially it's like beating the game as quick as possible yeah almost not even playing it okay they're like they're like da, 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 they're speedrunning yeah yeah, yeah ex exactly I'm hip I know I'm not just a boomer and uh, <laughs> the entire so they're one of the most famous like organizations that does that it raises like generally like two million dollars per week that they do it mm -hmm. and they donate it for a good cause but it's all all like woke non-stop over beating over the head and, like the gaming industry in the united states is super insanely woke whereas that i was at the european event it's just like Good old boys and gals enjoying video games. Mm -hmm. So, like, wokeness is like a uniquely American phenomenon. It, it like, does feel uh, at least more heavily so here than, than other places. Uh, it feels uniquely American in how bad it is. Yeah, well, I think part of it is it's like Americans embrace this culture of like hating their own country in some ways. Not everyone. And so I they're. Hate that. Yeah, I hate I it hate too. That particularly. And so, like, when is Europe right is like, now. oh, America is so backwards. Yeah. We're like, look how not backwards we are. Yeah. We love woke stuff. We're into pronouns, which like, again, personally disavow, not for me. But it makes it so that we are trying to outdo ourselves and it's pushing us farther down this crazy rabbit hole. Whereas Europe is, doesn't need to do that because Europe is happy with the way it is. I mean, they have issues, but like for the most part, European people like being European. When do you think that started? It's a little bit off topic, but when do you, when do you think that started? The Americans ha seeming to hate the America. 60s. The 60s. And mm -hmm. it just, it just continued. It got, got worse, worse and worse. worse, yeah. worse. Um, Thank I've, you, by the way. I've been watching, um, I've been watching a show called Boston Legal. I was telling him earlier, uh, and it was amazing to me how this show came out in 2004, uh, and it's very like um, we're we're well past 9/11, and we're into like the end of Bush term one. Uh, and in the show, the character of Denny Crane is a conservative, and the character of Alan Shore is a liberal. Uh, and, and the show is told from a generally liberal bend, right? And mm -hmm. that's fine. But it's very interesting how much general respect they seem to have for one another and for their country in aspects so of like the show. So like wouldn't even be in the same like, show. Yeah, yeah. like uh, the idea that basically uh, aspects of it are like uh, when they're c criticizing it, they're, they're criticizing America because they're saying we could be better, mm -hmm. but not in like a do better sort of way, but in, in more, there's more We hold ourselves to a higher standard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit off topic, but it was just in my mind. You know what show like famously, I think started like the anti-American rants? Mm -hmm. Do you guys see the newsroom? Oh yeah, no. there yeah. was like the the beginning of that show. It's this clip where like someone like I, I'm guessing like it's trying to portray like a Republican. It's talking about how the Americans are is the best nation in the world, and like the liberal reporter just goes on a diatribe about how we're like not ranked number one in anything and we're we actually suck. That's what. I, well, I won't get into politics on yeah. this. Let's but. let's let's keep it out of it. So, uh, what if Final Fantasy was to do one thing to get back on track? What would it be? So I kind of agree with what the director is saying that like I guess that we just need to make more games. You that, think like, more games is better. No, because they're saying like some that are basically like catered to, you know, 
like the this audience and some that are catered to this other audience. Okay. Although if you do that, I feel like that you lose like the magic of like just having like incredible laser like focus yeah. on one thing. And also I don't want this to become like a Fast and Furious and Star Wars Let's where, go! where they're just like pooping out a title every year. It's like member Star Wars? Let's go. We got later than Ewoks. It's like, I don't want that. I don't want yes, that at all. We should want more. We should want better than that. For real. We should want more Fast and Furious at all times. You are insane. All Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.